Today, I would like to talk about something very important, extremely urgent, because the United States and other Western countries are in great danger. And this danger may not be what you think it is. It is not a foreign power. It is not strictly economic. And it certainly isn't climate change. This danger rests closer to home. And it namely is what we are eating and how it is destroying us as a society. Because, make no mistake, we are witnessing the biggest mass casualty event in human history and a slow mass murder. And I do not use those terms lightly. So what is it about what we are eating that is so damaging to our health? Well, I can sum it up in two words. Ultra-processed foods. Ultra-processed foods. What are ultra-processed foods? Well, as the name suggests, they are foods that are processed. They are man-made in factories, and they are far from their original source, from their natural source. They undergo a process, they have things added to them that are unnatural, and then people consume them. Millions of people everywhere are consuming these fake products. Now, one of the hallmarks of ultra-processed foods is sugar. They are extremely high in sugars. You have to be very careful because often food manufacturers will deliberately hide sugars under other names. They are also low in fiber. They contain other chemicals, processed seed oils, other additives, preservatives, and typically you will find a very long ingredient list and you won't recognize what's even on the ingredient list. You see, a calorie is not a calorie. It is not that simple as just monitoring your calorie intake. It's what's done to the food and the metabolic disarray that results when we consume these types of foods. Statistics show now that over 70% of all energy intake in the United States is from ultra-processed foods. Other Western countries are fast catching up. In the United Kingdom, it's 50%. And this is a dramatic increase from a few decades ago when it was closer to zero. People ate natural food, which our body is built to process. And in children, the statistics are just the same. We as a society are feeding our children horrible, ultra-processed, fake, fake foods that food corporations have deliberately made addictive and hyper-palatable. They're artificial, they're addictive, they taste good, but they're awful for us. So what we have now resulting is a metabolic health catastrophe. Catastrophe, it's not a crisis, it's a real catastrophe. We are seeing this reflected in statistics. Research shows that now, under 10% of the United States is metabolically healthy, measured by different parameters, including body mass index, other blood work like cholesterol, blood sugars, HbA1c. Very few people are metabolically healthy. What's happened in a few generations? It certainly isn't genetics. Our genetics haven't suddenly changed. Now we are fast approaching, we may even be at the point where you take the average person in sub-Saharan Africa, assuming it's not an extreme like a war-torn, a, um, a poverty-ridden nation where people are starving, but you take the average sub-Saharan African, you measure their blood tests, and they will have better lab markers than the average American. What the hell have we done to this country? And this will eventually bring the country down if we continue down this road. Again, I do not exaggerate. Higher taxes, decreased productivity, increased healthcare costs. 
when these ultra processed foods are consumed, our body has no idea what we put into our bodies. Metabolic disarray results. Our liver is damaged. Insulin is secreted at way higher levels than our ancestors ever secreted insulin. We become insulin resistant. Our gut microbiome, the trillions of organisms that reside naturally in our guts, is destroyed and disease results. We all know what's happened to obesity levels over the last few decades, gone through the roof, and ultra-processed foods, high in these artificial substances, chemicals, sugars, is the main reason why. Yes, we are less active, but you cannot outrun a bad diet. You can do all the exercise you want, but if you're putting in the wrong food at the other end, you will never achieve metabolic success. So that is what is happening now with hundreds of millions of people that are getting the majority of their calories, energy intake from ultra processed foods. Type 2 diabetes is soaring. It's going through the roof. And our medical establishment doesn't really want to address the root causes. Neither do any of the other big players who are totally corrupted. It is not normal for large numbers of teenagers to be getting type 2 diabetes. These things are unheard of. But the numbers are going through the roof. We have young adolescents now, large numbers with fatty liver disease. Some even approaching the stage where their livers are failing because they have been pumped with sugars, with artificial foods since they were born. What a tragedy for the next generation. And if you think numbers are bad right now, just wait another 10, 20 years and see what's going to happen. Obesity levels 30, 40 years ago were under 5%. Now, in the United States, over two thirds of people are overweight or obese. Some states have obesity levels approaching 50%. Let that sink in. And all of the resulting disease processes that will occur. Obesity is not complicated, no matter how much you might hear that line from the establishment. There is a simple fix if we really want to address it and push it within medicine and healthcare. And of course we can do it with empathy and compassion. Of course we can. But we must do it for the sake of the future health and well-being of millions and millions of people. Because the reality is by the time someone even starts to push on weight and become obese, they have already become sick. You see, we get this the other, we think of this the other way around that people get obese and then get sick, but actually your cells have already become overloaded and you've already frequently become insulin resistant before anyone starts to put on weight. So the numbers right now are catastrophic and they're only going to get worse with time because we're heading in this awful, awful direction. And why are we heading in this direction? Take it from me. I was once someone who was trapped as well within this system. I used to eat a lot of ultra processed foods and I'm in medicine myself before my eyes were opened to what is really going on and how the entire system is set up to make people sick, to get them on a conveyor belt, especially in the United States. We have an entirely corrupted establishment that benefits many large players who benefit from large numbers of people being sick in our profit-driven system. Let's start with the medical establishment. Vast profits are generated from this problem, from people getting sick. And I'm not saying every individual doctor at the front line wants people to be sick, but of course the profits are made in this current system from more people being sick. So what incentive is there? to really address the root causes of these problems in society. Because I fail to believe that if the medical establishment was all in on this, that we wouldn't see the needle move. If they literally adopted the philosophy, the correct philosophy, that every cell in your body, every thought that you have is powered by what you're eating. Therefore, if you come to me with an issue, supposing it's a routine run of the mill issue, 
possibly caused by inflammation. Obviously, a broken bone or an acute event is somewhat different. But surely, a run-of-the-mill run issue, the first question should be, well, what are you eating? Because that is immediately what's going to affect your health. But the medical establishment is not all in. Because we have become corrupted by other motives. In the United States, most physician societies are funded by pharmaceutical companies who obviously want more people to be on their medications. And think about the organizations leading us, the CDC and FDA. They are also corrupted. They have other motives. The people at the top are on a merry-go-round with big industry. It's unacceptable. And as far as I'm concerned, it's a violation of the Hippocratic Oath. And if it was up to me, I would immediately defund and disband every single three-letter organization and only instill people who really care about the health and well-being and don't have any corrupted, vested financial interests. The organizations supposedly leading us are not worthy. They do not focus on root causes, and they never will in their current state. What about other organizations like the American Heart Association? We're talking about a billion dollar organization. Look at their revenue. How does a heart association become a billion dollar organization? Well, if you look at who funds them, frequently they are funded by the very organizations that they're supposed to be regulating. Food companies. Look into the history of the American Heart Association and how it was founded. This is what we're dealing with in healthcare for those of us who really want to improve things and turn the tanker around. Let's talk about big pharmaceutical companies. Billion dollar organizations who have done especially well over the last few years. Two thirds of Congress. Two-thirds of Congress has taken a check from a pharmaceutical company. The pharmaceutical industry and other healthcare product industries spent $400 million last year lobbying on Capitol Hill. What do you think they're lobbying for? The health and well-being of Americans? You think that's really what they wake up thinking about? No, they want more profits and they want favorable regulations. And these industries are, complete, are in complete lockstep with our top medical organizations. This is why in America it's very difficult to really have a chance if you rely on the system to keep you healthy. Not to mention big food. Well, big food and pharmaceutical companies are buddy-buddy with each other. It's a vicious circle. You eat the terrible food which is put in front of you. You're not made aware of the health risks and then you get sick, and pharmaceutical companies make money. Currently, 10 companies almost completely control the food supply. These are conglomerates. They are massive trillion-dollar organizations, and they have complete control over the food supply. And they deliberately make hyperpalatable, addictive foods that are not natural, that were not around 100 years ago. Our great-grandparents didn't eat the food and they didn't get sick like we do with the same diseases, and then rely on the pharmaceutical companies, quote-unquote, to save us. A word about these pharmaceutical companies who are supposedly going to save us. Go online and look at the fines that have been paid, the civil fines, the criminal fines, billions and billions of dollars only over the last 20 years that pharmaceutical companies have paid. They are among the most fraudulent companies in history. And that is not me saying that. Go and look at the numbers. If a medical professional had even one-tenth the criminal record of a pharmaceutical company, they would never be allowed near a patient again. Yet these companies are supposed to be our savior. Think about that for a moment. I'm not saying that everything that comes out of pharmaceutical companies are bad. I certainly... I'm glad that I'm living in 2023 and not 1723. There are some great medications around which we do occasionally need. 
but they are there for when we need them. They should not be there with the philosophy of let's get as many people on medications as possible and have them as customers for life. We've gone badly, badly wrong, ladies and gentlemen. So what can you all do about this? What can you do for yourself and your family to stay healthy? Because it is not easy in today's environment, especially in the United States and many other Western countries. I'm from the United Kingdom. It's fast, sadly, approaching the US. The United States brought this problem to the whole world. Ultra-processed foods that are cheap, they are addictive. Well, obviously, the first rule is to just have an awareness. Have an awareness that this food is not natural. Same with drinks, sodas, etc. are not natural. Now, nobody's saying that you can never have a treat, but have an awareness that food that is not natural, that your gut was not built for, will eventually have an effect on you if you are consuming these foods in vast, vast quantities. Have an awareness. Read food labels. I accept that in today's world, cost is an issue, but if you think healthy foods, fresh foods, ideally organic foods without pesticides even, if you think they are expensive, try getting sick and see how expensive that is, especially if you're in the United States. Making that change in your life of switching from mostly ultra-processed foods like most people eat now to real foods, foods that were around 100 years ago, that people ate 100 years ago, that your great-grandparents ate, do not underestimate the difference that this can make to your physical and mental health. I know people that have made the switch and literally within weeks, they notice an enormous difference, physical and mental health. Yes, I said mental health as well, because we don't think about that enough. Everything in us is powered by what we eat, including our brains. Junk in, junk out. All that ultra processed foods, the sugars, the seed oils, other artificial ingredients, it's wreaking havoc with your internal system if that's what you are mainly eating. And there are so many great ways to make real food. It takes a bit of effort. You can season it. You can add spices. Do whatever you want that you find tasty. But get that food from natural sources. Commit to that for yourself and your family. And if you, like me, detest the system around you that is making so many people sick, that is profiting off this conveyor belt, wants people to be sick and dependent, there is no better way to stick your finger up at the establishment than to make the right decisions every day, stay healthy. Of course, there are other components to this, like exercising, good sleep, working on any stress in your life. But the number one thing, by far, is what you eat, what you put into your body. Commit to that. Make that switch in your life. Real food, natural food, what nature intended. We have this one body. It is a true gift, a real gift to us. Treat it well. We're only on the planet for a short amount of time. We owe it to ourselves to be the best version of ourselves possible. Thank you.